Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to our amazing musicians and Leah Cottrell. The band is called Leah's Friends, I've been told. So it's just great, great music and, and it's wonderful to have so many people out here. Of course, many of you joined us today for the presentations from our State Library Fellows and it has been a fantastic day. We've heard so many amazing stories, such a wide variety of research projects. So thank you all very much for coming along. Now, of course, we are here now because uh, Dr. Leah Cotterell is indeed herself a State Library Fellow, and we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. But first of all, I would like to acknowledge Peter Hackworth, who is in the audience today. <laughs> Peter's first business was the Primitive Ca Coffee Lounge. And of course, that's what it's all about this afternoon. And it was opened just one month short of 67 years ago. Is that not a remarkable thing? <laughs> and Peter is still running her market business. So she has been in business continuously for 67 years. What an inspiration. What a role model for the women of Brisbane, indeed for every business person in Brisbane. In that time, Peter's contributed to Brisbane's music scene, employing hundreds of musicians over the years, including our 2022 Letty Cats Fellow, Dr. Leah Cotterell. <laughs> also in the audience this afternoon, Sally Mellick, wife of the late Stanton Mellick, O-A-M-E-D, a generous sponsor of the Letty Cats Fellowship, which Dr Cottrell has undertaken. So now, <laughs> absolutely, a round of applause. I've run a, I haven't got enough hands. So before we get on with more music, we just want to ask Leah a little bit about the um, research that she's been doing and uh, find out a bit about where her research has taken her. So first up, Leah, can I ask you, I'm worried I'm going to trip over watch something watch here. Watch out for the bongos. Watch out for right? the bongos. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So now I understand that your fellowship was to research the photographs that were found of the Primitive Cafe and that collection contains 200 scanned photos from the 1950s and they've only just been recently added to the State Library's collection last year. So tell us a bit more about that. Well, the way it all came to be starts in a really classic Brisbane way where I was playing cards with Jeanne 40 years ago and we became friends over a game of two-handed 500 that's still running. <laughs> and then about five years later when I was starting to get serious about singing, Peter gave me some gigs at her restaurant in St. Lucia, The Cat's Tango. I remember it well. It was fantastic. <laughs> we loved it. <laughs> yeah, and then 15 years after that, Helen and I were doing a project interviewing musicians across many age groups, people who had never been famous but had made big contributions and venue operators, and we interviewed Peter and she took out these photographs. And that was in 2003, 20 years ago. And then we had a Friends of the Primitive gig about, I don't know, in 2015 and got all the old patrons and musicians together and had a ball. And then in 2022, actually, I think, the photos finally found their way into a public collection. And that's really the best of it because now they'll be here for a long time. That's a wonderful thing. So... <laughs> You're saying that you want to celebrate musicians who aren't necessarily famous but are incredible artists. So how did you go about getting new information on the people who were in the photographs? Well, there are not many of the people from the primitive photographs who are still with us, but there are a few, and one of them is Buzz Ennis. And so we sat down and talked to Buzz a bit more about the about the life and times of the late 50s in Brisbane jazz. And I got some great information from David Bentley. You remember Dave Bentley? We've got now an email 
sort of relationship going on. So it was musicians talking to musicians that unearthed more of the biographical stories. And then I put a photograph of Wilma reading up on a Facebook group and I was able to get information about another musician from his children, about Stan Walker from his children. And I'll talk about that in the show, show in my presentation, in my research reveal. <laughs> get straight, fly right. And, um, and so bit by bit by bit, things came together. And today I met a new friend, Mariel, who's gonna tell me all about Lloyd Adamson. So one thing leads to another. And now I also understand that you have approached sharing the research outcomes in a very creative way. We're not going to see a regular presentation. We're going to see songs. That's right. So it's been a long held plan for Helen and I to write some songs about the people who are in the photographs. And Helen's got an incredible capacity to write in the styles of the time. And then I've taken the interview materials that we had and kind of structured them into the lyrics. And so what you're going to hear today is three of the four songs are new songs that have been written from the perspective of some of the people in the photographs. That is amazing. So we're having an exclusive um, event here yeah. happening, brand new songs coming out. Yeah. So through the course of all of this, what have you learnt about jazz in Queensland? That's a big question, I know. I know. And I'm going to tell you that it's kind of what... Jazz has taught me about Queensland because when I came into the project, I had my own biases that I was um, having to deconstruct because when I first met these guys and I was playing jazz in the 1990s, Brisbane was very separated in terms of styles. There were modern jazz players and trad jazz players and the twain would very seldom meet. Helen was one of the only crossovers. <laughs> And um, I expected that to be reflected in the material about the Primitif, and I was wrong. Because even though the Primitif was exclusively hip and modern jazz oriented, there were people playing all over Brisbane, a spectrum of styles, a spectrum of age groups. It was heavily networked. And even regardless of all of those repressive regulations of the day, people were getting around it and having fun. So again, it's, it's a Brisbane, Queensland story. Yeah, that's fantastic. So do we have something that people can go to to look at? Yeah, today, during the presentation, are you ready? First QR code, sir. There's gonna be a series of five QR codes that lead you to the blogs that I've written about the Primitif because there won't be time for me to tell you all the stories. So if you wanna grab them and email them to yourself or something like that, You'll have the chance and um, we'll work it out. Otherwise, go to the State Library website and have a look. Everything's on that. Thanks so much, Dr. Leah Cotterell. And of course, there will be a performance in a moment. But first of all, I um, just want to go through a couple of things. Leah is going to tell us more about the Primitive Cafe and her research and, of course, the fabulous music. This afternoon's event is going to conclude at about 5 o'clock. And we have had a spectacular day celebrating Queensland's history and I do hope that you have been inspired, perhaps it's even sparked an idea. And if you want to undertake your own research journey, you can visit the John Oxley Library on Level 4. It is open daily from 10 till 5 or perhaps you might like to apply for a fellowship yourself. Applications for the 2025 Queensland Memory Awards open in July. So you've got plenty of time to formulate an idea and put it together and see how you can use the library's collection to find out more about that topic that you're passionate about. And you can look out for more information on the State Library's website or on the State Library's social media platforms in coming months. Before I wrap up, I'd want to just thank all of our fantastic presenters today for such wonderful, insightful discoveries. It has been a truly fascinating day, wonderful discussions and of course many more opportunities coming to examine our understanding of Queensland history and delve even deeper into the State Library collections. Thank you all so much for coming and now sit back 
and enjoy Leah's presentation and, of course, the music. Welcome to Brisbane. It's March 1957. If you're about 20 years old, you're nearly old enough to vote, unless you're Aboriginal. And you're old enough, if you're a man, to volunteer for national service. And out there, the world is in strife. You know, there's an uprising in Indonesia, British nuclear tests in the Pacific, and the Suez Canal is closed while the Israelis occupy Gaza. In Queensland, the politics of the Labor government is about to tear itself apart, leading to 32 years of conservative rule. But Brisbane's booming. There's new subdivisions at Zilmere and Strathpine. And guess what? 37 acres of Kenmore just came up for auction. Bargain. And in the community, people are worried about liquor laws, polio vaccines and finding petrols. Ladies are still known by their husbands' names. For entertainment, you could go high or low. Gilbert and Sullivan at Her Majesty's and the nudie follies at the Theatre Royal. And of course, there were 55 suburban cinemas showing double bills. Dance music everywhere, on the radio, and all those kids buying twice as many uh, records as they used to, and they, the dance music was um, old-time dancers, modern dancers, square dancers, Monte Carlos, naughty rock and roll, with big bands at Cloudland and the Ritz and combos at dozens of suburban halls and hotels, nightclubs, floor shows, variety artists and comedians, backed by the house band. Surface Paradise was basically a strip of clubs, and on Queen Street we had La Boheme at the top and El Morocco at the bottom. And in between Queen Street was wall-to-wall -wall banks, insurance offices, newspapers, radio stations, department stores, and so many pubs. Yeah, Queen Street at night was all neon, bright and beckoning, but Sunday nights, tumbleweeds. The pubs were shut, and to have music, you had to get council permission. And to do that, you needed to get permission from the churches. Or not. Walking north on Queen Street, just past Creek, Ro uh, Creek Street, there was a new arcade, the Piccadilly Arcade, all marble and glass, and in the basement was a coffee lounge, the Primitive Coffee Lounge, dark and smoky. The coffee was terrific, the toasted sandwiches legendary, and through the week it was a great place to catch up with your friends. There was a notice board for messages, a chess club, a record player, some great records, and Sunday nights it was jazz, modern jazz. Peter Hackworth, oh sorry, the patrons would overflow onto the stairs, the musicians and singers would travel for hours to sit in with the band and young players would be there to learn, their ears flapping open. Well, Peter Hackworth was the heart and soul of the Primitive. People turned to stare when she walked in, her smile would light up the whole room and Sundays were for Peter to have everything she liked in one place. And that was why the Primitive existed at all. Peter grew up with a mother. The stand is not working for me. Let's just get that right. Peter grew up with a mother who ran businesses, beauty parlors, a motel, a block of flats. Jo was good with money. Peter was different. She was a dreamer. She thought she might be a sailor or an opera singer. She didn't like working in the bank. The hospital made her sad and waitressing was a dud. She didn't want anyone telling her what to do. And then when she turned 21, the insurance that Joe took out when Peter was born paid out a thousand pounds and Joe said, just do what you want to do. Darkens. Yeah, she needs her microphone turned up. Well, I believe everyone's got to do their own thing. Go where you're meant to be. All day walking, out in the morning. Blue days, out on the beach. Blue girl was waiting and 
anticipating what she could be. Work bell ringing, and no more singing. Long days living to work thousand pounds. She gave me, my mother saved me. Just do what you want to do. Well, Peter says she must have been mad. 21 years old, a single mother with a six-old child starting a business. But she had friends, connections, and family. Richard Werner was a commercial artist who adored Peter. He designed the mural that wrapped around the back of the room. She spent her thousand pounds on the music, the piano, the PA, and the coffee, a real Italian espresso machine. Then she hired a French chef, Hungarian waiters, and two Italian baristas. When she opened the door, the place was packed. There's a lion snaking round the corner. Peter, where are they going? I don't know why, don't know how, got to do my own thing. Stopping me, oh, weekdays paying, the people saying, me, me, down at the prim jazz record spinning, from the beginning, they were looking for me, smart and fun ones, the wild and young ones, nowhere, oh, they'd rather be best bands, great singing, the whole room swinging, jazz on Sunday at the prim, jazz on Sunday at the prim, jazz on Sunday at the prim. Thank you. There's probably a QR code up there for the blog on Peter. All right. <laughs> hey? Yeah, no, no, the Peter blog would be up for Peter. Uh, it's on. It's on. No, it's just always on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, you know, like Peter, Kevin had friends in the modern art scene. And these photos of the primitive seemed to be how he trained himself as a photographer, Kevin Anderson. There were times later in life when he'd pursue photography for pleasure, but this skill also led to working in camera stores and photographing weddings. Something special about the prim brought Kevin in on Sunday nights to take these photos. His daughter Lisa said that he loved jazz, and you can see that, and he loved that Peter was trying to do something different with the food. All the photos, nearly 200, they're digitized. You can see them through the State Library catalog. Getting to know something more about Kevin and about the musicians and entertainers at the Primitif has been great. So my thanks, my thanks to the Queensland Memory Awards and to the Mellick family for sponsoring the Letty Cats Fellowship. The ongoing goal for these photos is to identify all of the players and the entertainers. And if you can help with that, then we'd be really grateful. Some of the photos are flash lit, full of energy, and some are capturing the players and performers in a single spotlight, outlining their hands and faces. They're very atmospheric. One of the singers who was most photographed at the Primitif is Paula Langlands. I was lucky to be able to interview Paula in 2016. Her long career followed a trajectory from showgirl to jazz band singer to cabaret star to TV regular. And through it all, she developed her vocation as a jazz stylist and educator. In later years, Paula was a, a great advocate for contemporary Australian jazz. She was the first Australia Council jazz coordinator in Victoria and presented her weekly community radio program in Sydney for more than two decades. It's going to be a while. <laughs> At the age of 17, Paula started out in theatre gigs, touring as a showgirl in an illusionist's act and then on the Tivoli circuit, 
touring with her special turn being to stand in front of the curtain in a tight white satin gown, singing the very dramatic song, Something Cool. <laughs> but Paul, what Paula really wanted was to sing jazz. So she worked a couple of long residencies in Sydney with the band leader, guitarist and lifelong friend, Rick Farback. Rick helped Paula choose repertoire and taught her musical rudiments. So, how did Paula get to the primitif? Well, like so many other artists from Sydney and Melbourne, Paula came north to work. She spent two years on the Gold Coast, living in a flat above the chemist shop on the corner of Cavill Avenue with two other singers. They had this very popular Calypso review at the beautifully named Corroboree Room. And <laughs> But it was when she was working with the comedian Red Moore at the Broad Beach Hotel that Paula would come up. Both Red and Paula loved to sing with Stan Walker. He was a wonderful accompanist and everyone at that time talks about Stan. Stan Walker was a self-taught musician, a master of both traditional and modern styles. He was invited to come to Melbourne from London by Graham Bell. Then he moved to Brisbane for the weather for his wife. And here he played with the best musos in town and was praised by big name touring artists like Helen Hume and Hazel Scott for his hard swinging style. He was particularly renowned among singers for his beautiful accompaniment. And when he was dying of cancer in his mid forties, they say people flew from all over Australia to sit in with Stan at the Lotus Room Stan is what brought Paula to the primitive. So in 2016, she told us that her favorite song was Lover Man. And I would love to have heard her singing that with Stan Walker at the primitive. I would have loved that. Looking at the photos, I can almost hear her lovely voice. This is a song for Paula. in my ear up close to listen so I could hear each note they played on the radio or oh, every song I know I learn by ear Carmen and Sarah and Anita Watching their records man
So here I stand in the spotlight, smiling to make a dollar, restless with the music here inside. Marshals and dance bands. So if you think I'm just a show girl, I'm going to show you I can sing and show how much I care. Love a man, oh well, where can you? Barzanis was in the first house band at the Primitif when he was about 20 years old. In a 2003 interview that Helen and I did with Buzz, he talked about, <laughs> and Barry Sutton was there, he talked about growing up in West End in the 1940s, about hearing radios and records in his neighborhood, a rich mix of jazz, Greek, and Lebanese popular music. Buzz tells a really great story about the first time he heard live jazz. The star of the story was a man who was a mainstay of the Brisbane jazz scene for 60 years or more, S.J. Bromley. Now, S.J. was passionate about jazz, running clubs, presenting radio programs, connecting people at live events. Lots of international artists wound up going back to S.J.'s little bungalow at, <laughs> at, um, at St. Lucia. And uh, Rick Farback remembered that when promoter Lee Gordon brought the jazz legends Teddy Wilson and Coleman Hawkins to Brisbane in 1960, the after party was at SJ's place. In my own life, in our lives, um, SJ was a regular at our jazz gigs in the early 1990s. And it was a good night when SJ would start slow dancing with his girlfriend Dottie. He was a very lovely man. So long story short, you don't mind if I tell this story? I'm going to tell it a couple of, couple of different ways now. Um, Buzz was running around with a mob of bodgies. When he sat down to listen to live music at a club, the SJ was running in 1954. SJ gave him a phone number for Neil Wilkinson, one of the best musicians in town. And Neil gave Buzz free lessons and when Buzz volunteered for national service, he walked straight into the army band because Neil recommended him to a friend. So Buzz reckons music saved his life, or at the very least, kept him out of jail. Which is a good thing, because here he is. It's Buzz Annis. A bunch of fellas we were knocking round one night When down the valley we were looking for a fight A band was playing at the old boys club So we went in and I sat down And I was listening to the music the first time I'd ever heard it playing right before my eyes A fella turned, he asked me if I'd like to play I wonder why, what did he see Looking at me, what life could be Turns out that Sydney was right And the band was running hot, the drums were wild He wrote a number on a car he said, you call this guy and tell him, Sydney said, give you a go. The rubbish you walked in with tonight, six months time you won't know. If 
you go and follow this path, see how far you will go. I will keep him up here. We're going to keep him up here for a minute. But you all have to be patient with me, fellas and Gay and uh, Helen. Fellas and Helen. So the Queensland Memory Awards, they open the library collections up for research. They bring new material in. And they identify the themes and stories that bring value and understanding to our lives. Right now, my fellowship has been focused on making sure some of the wonderful and important stories are available to the public because most of these stories have no presence online. You can't search the people I'm talking about. They don't turn up, right? Except Peter, she probably turns up. Um, what, I've been <laughs> what I've been able to do in the fellowship so far is just the start, really, of what you could do with Peter Hackworth's collection. I want to commend the State Library for recording oral histories with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders because one of the stars of the Primitive Photos is Wilma Reading, and she was interviewed last year, and the video will be posted on the website this year. Wonderful Wilma. She had a magnificent career as a jazz and cabaret singer. And this is a point I want to make. You know, Cairns has been really important to jazz in Queensland. Wilma's aunt, uh, Dulcie Pitt, her stage name was Georgia Lee, she was a groundbreaker. Wilma's cousin, Faye Guevara, whose stage name was Candy Divine, she had a celebrated international career as a singer and radio personality. And Johnny Nicole, too. He had a huge career as a guitarist and singer. And Wilma, Faye and Johnny are all pictured singing at the Primitive. This generation of gifted jazz musicians from Cairns, what a great subject for research. <laughs> so in particular, I want to I wanna thank Lisa Anderson, who told me about her father, Kevin and Libby Allen and Jan Burgess, who told me about their father, Stan Walker, and David Bentley, who gave me lots of stories to follow up on. He sent columns from a magazine called Music Maker, where he neatly rounded up the live music scene in Brisbane in 1960 and 61. They're columns he wrote when he was still at school, because he was precocious, let's face it. And of course, I want to thank the people who've given us interviews, Buzz and Barry Sutton, Paula Langlands, Rick Farback, and of course the woman who made it all go, Peter Hackworth. <laughs> now a lot of people in the photos have gone. P Paula died last year, Rick died in 2005. But in the process of doing the re research, I was able to connect Rick's son, Kent Farback, to the State Library, and Rick's amazing scrapbooks are in the collection. And I'd like to point out that his very witty and funny and wise memoir called Kleptomania is downstairs in the bookshop now. So that's great. So how do I even t start to tell you about Rick's life in music? It's such a big story. From Riga in Latvia to Sydney, Surface Paradise in Brisbane. From a time when guitars were just starting to be electrified to the era when music became digitised. He was there in the early days of an Australian recording industry and right on the spot at the beginning of television. His memoir is so great. And at every stage of his life, Rick was motivated by the desire to make good music. He played accordion, guitar and bass. And when his arthritis got in the way, 
he learned to play chromatic harmonica. He was a great musical director and arranger and a card. At the end of his guitar, he used to hang a baby's dummy. <laughs> and when punters came up to ask him what it was for, he would say, for suckers like you. <laughs> Buzz knew Rick. Paula played with Rick. Everyone played with Rick, let's face it. Meryl, same with Rick. I've just met her today. Rick got around. Wonderful. But you've got to understand that that's what I found in the end, was that Brisbane was really networked musically. Uh, and, of course, there's one outstanding fact I only just learned recently, was that Peter sang, for the very last time in public, she sang Ave Maria at Rick and Dawn's wedding. <laughs> so I wish I could wind back the clock and hear that. Anyway, I'll finish uh, soon with a version of a song arranged by Rick and recorded by him, but I just want to say to you that Buzz is the same tribe as Kim Ambrose and Jamie Clark and Helen Russell and the people that they teach. Music skills are something, they're a universal language and they're worth having. So if you, if you want to do anything, support live music and support musicians. And you can do that. Jamie has an album on Bandcamp he's just put out. It's fabulous, beautiful, atmospheric originals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kim has been... He's going to be on the music show. Is it this week or next week? <laughs> oh, it's last week. You have to look it up. Sagani Weaver, the local band. Kim has just been touring with them. Uh, Helen's actually going to put together a, a, a vocal group and... Uh, actually get to hear some of the beautiful a cappella arrangements she's been writing for years. And that's a new thing this year. Beautiful. And Buzz, he just keeps mentoring and teaching pipe bands for free because he figures Neil Wilkinson taught him for free. And so here's a cut down of Rick's fabulous arrangement of the Latin jazz standard Poinciana. Casting shadows from above. On Siena, somehow I feel the jungle heat. Within me, there grows a rhythmic savage beat. Love is everywhere, its magic perfume fills the
is everywhere its magic perfume fills the air to and fro you sway my heart in time i've learned to care those guys may turn from blue to gray Dream.